So I think automation is going to continue to be the main driving force. Mm. And whether you say automation, I heard a lot of people talk about AI and how that's going to change things. I don't know. To me, that's more automation as well. But it, it's true. It's going to, you're going to need less worker bees and more people that, mm. that can take the data and, and interpret it and run with it. And less people just, you know, doing the rote work. Mm. That, that work's going to go away. You know, more straight through processing, less keying in of things, uh, but more analysis and, and understanding what it means to, to your company and how, how to manage that. So the, to me, that's the biggest trend. I, one of the things that I thought was interesting is that so I've been, since I was at Merck and then at Celgene, you know, I was a member of the Noi Group. Mm. And I heard a lot of companies talk about that one of the things they were looking for in new employees was coding experience. And they were, and this is mostly like tech companies that mm. were part, mm. members of the Noi Group. And I had never, given this much thought, but they were saying how they, they wanted employees that could do write algorithms and, and do some coding to help streamline some of their operations that they were doing. And to me, I, I thought it was interesting, but I, I felt like that's really the job of your vendors to, to do that sort of stuff. I, I, it's not really where I would necessarily want to direct my resources, but it might be like uh, the direction that we're going and we might just be a late adopter or something like that. You know, I think that's interesting, but I, I think it's really more the automation that's going to eliminate the mundane task and make the group a much more of an analytical group. I think with things like Brexit, and this has been going on for a while, because there was the sort of the Euro crisis with Greece, possibly, you know, everyone was worried that Greece or Italy or one of these countries was going to leave the Euro. That predated Brexit. But these are the things that are really worrying CFOs, you know, I mean, those are, those are big picture problems. And, and they want to make sure that they understand how it's going to impact their business and really that, that means you've got to reach out to, to the operations groups and, and understand what their footprint is in those markets. And, and I think you're viewed as, an, even though it's maybe a more of an operational thing, having a backup plan to mm. maybe move some stuff out of those markets or find a way to just work around the issue when it, when it comes, you know, you're the advisor to the, to the CFO or, or to the, you know, if you're, if you're an assistant treasurer to the assistant treasurer on how to handle that sort of thing. Mm. Well, I just think that these sort of big, global flare-ups are not going to go away. You know, they're, mm-hmm. they're going to continue to happen, I think. So it's funny because when I first started, everything in FX was based on interest rates, differentials between markets and stuff. And then we got down to close to zero or negative rates. And now everything is, is political changes, you know, mm-hmm. in different countries. That's what really moves the, the FX rates and stuff. So it's interesting. It's a, it's a very interesting cycle to be going through right now. As you're working your way up, Take note of who you work for and, and their management style. Are they? Do you think they're a good manager or a bad manager? Because you can learn from both. Mm. And I've been fortunate. I've, I've worked for some really great people over the years. And I've worked for a couple of kind of averages to mediocre managers as well and, and better managers heard of lately. And I've taken le- learnings from each of those. And, and I really try to emulate when I'm managing someone, you know, like how would, how would this person have handled the situation, you know? I find that really helpful. 